Here is a General Electric 3-speed electrically reversible window box VN. I forget what the model number is. I'm sure I've been told in the other videos, but I just don't remember. I will look it up and I will type it in the video box for it to be ignored. This is one of the prized pieces in my collection. This was my grandfather's and I just kind of stole it from him a couple years ago and now I use it over here. I don't know how it originally came into the family. I know the conversation came up once but there was no definitive answer as to who bought it. My grandfather had the original manual which I now have so I'm fairly certain he bought it because that's he always kept that kind of stuff so I, I think he bought it but I I don't think anybody remembers anymore. I mean, this thing is probably about 50 years old now. This was in fairly regular use up until the 3733s were purchased in 99. And even after that point, it was still used from time to time. I remember seeing this over there quite often when I was younger. I even remember cleaning it with my grandfather on a number of occasions. So this thing has a tremendous amount of hours on it and it does still run pretty much like new. I have oiled it before with a fairly unconventional lubrication process but it did work because there was a point in time where it started to to become a little stiff uh, so I oiled it up and it's been running fine ever since. Years ago, this is probably going back 20 years at my grandparents house I used to put these little labels on all the fans over there that I liked there was a couple of fans over there <laughs> that I didn't like uh, my grandmother had a tower fan which I <laughs> just hated at the time I, mean, I still don't particularly like them to this day but I I don't know why I I just despised that thing at the time and so I I took ownership of all the other fans with those tags and uh, I, I put a I put a similar tag on the tower fan but except it said had my grandmother's name <laughs> I also put uh, these labels the reverse bow window box fan I've learned to spell a few more words since then. This VN should also have one or both of those labels unless it fell off. Oh no, this one will not because this is not, that's not the original one. The original one is downstairs. This is uh, a second one and there's a backstory to that which we'll get into in a different video. So it's a three speed model reversible handle still in good shape this goes up here so that the window doesn't vibrate or not the window to screen this was attic stored over the last 30 plus years and by some miracle it's still in very good condition including all the plastic components Got the typical uh, G shaded pull motor. These motors were okay, but there were failure modes for sure. And I think these are not thermally protected. Maybe they're impedance protected. I don't know. My grandfather did replace the. He did replace. The, you know, I should really open the screen so that we can see it a little bit clearer. that again there we go that's much better my grandfather did replace the cord at one point because it had frayed so it's got a replacement cord and um, looks like he labeled certain wires 
when he was doing that and it's got the infamous bag on there which I guess is factory because most of them have that his little clips are all still there somehow I think maybe one of them is missing now one of the bolts stripped out so I had to replace it with a bigger one motors all been cleaned the windings are not looking too hot anymore but as of now it's still running it's still running pretty good I don't know if it's rusty or it's just dirty or what this really don't look too good you know it's high hours and it's been stored in the attic so what do you expect So let's go ahead and turn this on. I just took this out last night to use it again for a little while. I have a lot of memories with this fan, both at my grandparents' house. At the original house, I had it off and on for a short period of time. I don't remember what the circumstances were. Um, and then at the old location, I had it pretty much permanently, and then obviously it's here too. Um, it fits very nice in the window, very very balanced, uh, and everything just with the way the weight of the motor and so forth is. This is what the replacement cord looks like. Just basic appliance cord and a little plug. Looks like the original strain relief is still there. I don't know how he managed to get that back on. Those are not easy to work with at all. Other than the color, the cord is pretty much the same as what it would have come with. One of those really thin, thin gauge uh, cords from the era. It's a very nice looking fan. I always like the aesthetics of these blades. And of course the GE logo, what used to be the trademark of pure quality and brilliant design. Now it's just completely sabotaged. It's terrible. What a shame. What a sad story with what GE has turned into. These fans were so well designed and so overbuilt. On the reversible models only, you'll see this ring on the guard, and this ring serves a purpose. The purpose of that ring is for if the fan is running in reverse and it tipped over, being that the blades are plastic, they have some flex to them. Running in reverse, if it hit the front guard, it would just the blade would just deflect off of this ring. If the ring wasn't there, the blade could get caught in the slats and get ruined. Somebody at GE actually thought of that and enough people thought that was important enough to preserve the product to put that on there. You will never see anything like that in the products made today, ever. Here's the low speed. Very nice quiet low, but yet it's moving plenty of air. This is a lot more powerful than I remembered it. I don't know if I just, I guess I just recalled it incorrectly. I hadn't used this in probably a year or two. As much of my collection has sat dormant during this whole relocation process, and now I'm finally getting back to, to using stuff again. So I'm digging through all the boxes and stuff and bringing out these pieces I haven't used in a while and uh, I put it up to high and I was just I was quite impressed I was moving some good air and I really didn't think that these moved that the air that good but I guess I was recalling incorrectly so that's low it's very quiet you know it's not moving a lot of air but uh, you can feel it quite a ways away from the fan 
and the noise level is just fantastic. That sound, that squeaky sound you're hearing right now is not the fan, it's some kind of stupid bug. Alright, now we'll go up to medium. Curiously and ironically, the medium on these motors also seems to fizz out. And I had completely forgotten about this over all the time that we've been working on that that uh, new old stock 3733. I totally forgot about the fact that it happens on these fans as well. And it's been like this for a while. In fact, I remember my grandfather used to tell me that in order to get it to work right on medium, he would have to start it on high and then drop it back down after a minute or two because the medium just didn't didn't work quite right. Uh, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but uh, it, the medium is really not that much faster than low. Now sometimes, and this is the difference between the Marco motors and these motors, sometimes if you let this run for a while and the motor warms up, it kind of comes back and works properly on medium once again. I'll put it to high and then I'll bump it back down to medium. See it kind of holds the speed a little bit. It should be somewhere around there, but it keeps falling back. That's it right there. And then it goes down. I suspect if we let it run on medium for a while, it'll uh, it'll come back. I don't know why these motors are doing that. And again, this is shaded pole like the Marcos, so there's no capacitor to wear out. There's really nothing to wear on it. Just, it doesn't make any sense. So we're going to go to high and you're going to see that there's a huge difference between medium and low and medium and high. And something kind of rattles a bit. You have to jam the handle over like that to keep it quiet. Now this is moving a lot of air. More than I remember. This is really quite powerful. And since the blades are in the Venturi, it's, it's very high volume air movement too. This is probably full of wind noise. still very quiet even on high and it's a very pleasant deep sound He didn't use this as much towards the end of the time before I took it. Even the hub is, is pretty centered still. It's, it's actually running really, really nicely. I find a lot of these have, have pretty bad uh, balance problems, but this one's not bad. It is shaking a little bit, but it's pretty reasonable. And you have to remember this is early 70s. The plastic molding technology, even the balancing technology, was not there like it is today. I think it's a lot more excusable for a mold from 1972 or whatever the exact year is to be slightly out of balance compared to a mold made today. We should have been able to completely perfect plastic molding by now and balancing. Alright, let's go ahead and cut this thing off. It starts on low, which is nice too.
Seems like the bearings are pretty content still. I'll switch it to reverse. And load. And after we've shown it on reverse, we'll go outside and try to capture the startup sounds. There's the low. It's making a little clicking sound that I always remember it making on low. I don't know what that is. I always thought it had something to do with those washers, but I'm really not sure anymore. If I've tried to fix it, I was just too young to fully understand the mechanics and was not successful. I haven't tried to fix it in recent times, I don't think. The medium. Now curiously, the medium's reverse is a little bit stronger, and I remember it was always like that too. I remember it always would run faster in reverse medium than in re medium forward. Because this is probably not too far from where, where the medium should actually be. It's just a tremendous amount of air going into this fan. I'm going to open the screen again so that we get a feel an accurate amount of air going out. I'm going to coil this over the screen. I'm just going to load the whole window. Yeah, this is this is pretty much the normal speed medium. I don't know why it's working properly on reverse and not forwards, but it was always like that. So then, of course, that would open the question: Well, is it something with? Is it something with like the windings wear out? Like this, the windings should not wear out over time. They shouldn't just all of a sudden get weaker because it's, it has a lot of hours on it. That's not how motors work. Um, Actually, I forgot to check the power draw on all these speeds. I guess now is an interesting time to bring that up. At 118.4, the volts, we have 1.73 amps, 106 the watts, and 0.52 the power factor, which is absolutely abysmal. Switch it to forwards. And of course, there's always going to be the people to say, oh no. You should never switch it from forwards to reverse or reverse to forwards while it's on. Blah, blah, blah. But of course, none of those people can ever explain why or what's going to happen. So let's see what the power draw is. See how much slower it is? It's considerably slower. And that is uh, 1.85 amps. So it, it's definitely different. I suppose it's possible that maybe um, something with the aerodynamics of the blades has less resistance on reverse. See, now that it's been running for a while, the medium is starting to become normal again. It's kicking up quicker than it was before. Hmm. That's 1.82 amps, the amps, 111 the watts, and 0.51 the power factor. Let's see what it was on high. And on high, that is 2.67 the amps, 168 the watts, and the power factor 0.53 the power factor. 
these things are very power hungry. And low, it is uh, 1.46 amp, the amps, 86 the watts, and 0 0.49 the power factor. So these motors just have a terrible power factor. A good sheeted pull motor can be up in the mid to high 70s for the power factor. So let's see now. Um, I forgot what the amps was on high already. Let's see what the amps is uh, when we go to reverse high. That's just the handle. On reverse the high, it's 2.64. That's about the same. So, I don't know. I don't get it. The amount of air this is pulling in is just unbelievable. It's moving a tremendous amount of air. Very, very powerful fan. Feels like it might be a little more powerful in reverse. I think it is. Let's see this down. This reverse is pretty good. Pretty equal. Now yeah, we'll try to get the startup sounds. I guess we'll have to do it from the outside here. I hardly ever see these anymore, but I do remember seeing some of these around from time to time in Windows back in the early 2000s. Now I think they've they've all pretty much gone extinct, at least around here. Alright, here's the low. I remember that vividly. Even the low is getting a little faster now. Yeah, the low is definitely running a little faster than it was before. You can see that the hub is slightly off-centered. But it's not too bad. Okay, here's the medium. Now the medium is 100% normal. Starts up all by itself, the medium, don't gotta put it on high. It's pretty much in between low and high. That kind of makes sense because I have seen a lot of 
shaded ball motors be like that where they don't work properly until the temperature gets up there. I don't know exactly what the reasoning is for that. I'm, I'm sure it's got something to do with some component of the motor is expanding with the heat. Although how much could it really expand? I'm surprised it makes that much of a difference. Now we'll do the startup on the high. quite that strong. 